Okay, so before this video begins, I just have to preface it by saying that I did not give context to the beginning analogy. So just know that my family owns 17 chickens, and that'll kind of help explain it. Sounds weird, but just, just watch the video. Hi there, my name is Lauren, and I'd like to think that I'm perpetually lost in the right direction, which basically means I'm pretty sure I'm doing life wrong, but because I'm acting authentically and intentionally, life just kind of happens to work out in that silly little serendipitous way of its... Is that grammatically correct? So I was flipping through one of my many journals and one that I came across kind of fit in pretty well with this video. And it's uh, it's about chickens. So the thing that not many people know about chickens <laughs> is that they are able to self-regulate at night so that they know when to go back into the pen. They like play around in their little section of the yard and then when it's nighttime they just kind of sort of know, make their way in, and then we close up the gate before we go to bed. And one time uh, they thought they had everyone inside, but they didn't. Um, they were actually missing the rooster. Didn't know where he was, looked all around the yard, and my parents have like 10 acres of land. Couldn't find him. They thought they might have seen him like way off in the distance, but you know, if you've ever tried to chase a chicken or a rooster, it just, it doesn't always work out. And when my parents woke up the next morning to let the chickens back out, they saw the rooster, that same rooster standing on top of the coop, like it was any other day, just calling at the world, doing what it does. And I thought that this was a really good analogy for intuition. I don't want you to think I don't know what I'm talking about because I very much do. It's more a matter of translating this to this. <laughs> it's like being lost in the right direction. It's like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident I'm doing this wrong, but you know, there you are the next morning standing perched on top of your little, ki you know, chicken coop. So. I moved to Chicago for my graduate studies. My whole background is in education. I went to school to be a teacher. I taught for a year. Actually, when the pandemic started, moved to Chicago to grad school, finished grad school, and now here I am. So during the period between here I am in grad school was job searching, job hunting, which can be especially hard when you're in a city that you're very, very new to. What's good about Chicago is that it's a really big educational hub, but when you're starting out and you're young like me and you don't know anyone, that kind of puts you in a tough spot. There's a lot of opportunities, but it's more a matter of like, how do I get to those opportunities? Because more often than not, you need an in, like you need a connection. And I, I just don't really have that many connections. I was job searching for probably, I'd say probably about three or four weeks. Um, and I was trying to figure out a way to marry up my educational background with something else I was really, really, really interested in, which was writing. Anything relating to writing, books, publishing. I've, I'm very, very, very interested in publishing. It's just a really massive, unshakable interest of mine. During this period, I was really, really caught between whether to pursue this field I was very familiar with and very qualified in versus an industry in a field I had no idea about, didn't really make sense, had no qualifications or connections to. Either way, I didn't really have connections, but in, in one, I'm set to go. and the other, I'd have to start all over because I don't know anything. I don't have any experience in publishing your books or writing. So I ended up hearing back from an opportunity that I applied to on a whim, maybe about two or three months before my like official job search. And it was an internship at a small local publishing place literally like a mile away from where I live now. I started learning after I finished up my studies that I was just really getting exhausted and tired by education, especially now more than ever with the pandemic, political division, like all these external contextual factors um, that just make it a really challenging industry right now. I've just been wanting a break from it. That was something that a lot of people in my inner circle didn't really quite get. Um, which was really frustrating for me. And so I found this opportunity that just seemed perfect. And so I applied for it. And a couple months later, when I was in the middle of my job search back in December, I heard back and they were interested in interviewing me. And so I was like, heck yeah, I'll interview with you. So I went through a couple rounds of that. At the end, I ended up getting the position, or getting the offer. Um, the only downside to this offer was the pay because as a lot of people know, internships don't always pay the greatest. It was an opportunity that logically did not make any sense whatsoever, but intuitively it felt so right. And I, I didn't understand why, it just, it felt really right. At this point, I was stuck between a field I was very, very qualified for and knowledgeable in versus an opportunity that was very new, new industry that would provide a lot of learning opportunities, but wouldn't suit my immediate needs 
like, you know, cash and money and all that stuff. So for about two weeks, I was really, really freaking out between those two opportunities. I was, I had probably produced enough stress to illuminate a small light bulb. And then a third opportunity arised. Um, this one just happened to be very, very serendipitous. And my boyfriend has a friend that he's been friends with for a really long time. And she works at a business that uh, needed more account managers for the book launch side of their business, which I thought was really cool. Basically, like if you're an author, you write the book and this answers the question of what now? Like, how do I prom promote my book? How do I get it out there? How do I get people to care? How do I market myself, grow my platform, and then utilize everything, all this growth for the next project. They were ideally looking for someone full time, which presented yet another dilemma. So now I was stuck between all these educational opportunities and a very educational city with this internship, now with this other job that was wanting someone full time in the same industry as the internship, but on two very different sides. One is editorial, one is marketing, basically. So I had three big choices to make, and this is not like, a bad situation to be in, to have a surplus of opportunities. I totally recognize that. It's more of, this was more of an internal battle of what people, what I thought people wanted me to be, the idea that people had of me and wanted me to pursue that image versus something that I truly identified with, a real interest of mine, something that I know would make me so happy going into work every day. Education, at least in my experience, especially with like classroom teaching and stuff, it's the rewarding moments are very few and far between, but when they hit, like they hit so well. It's, you know, your class throws you a party or you get recognized by your staff. Like all those moments are so, so touching. But, you know, it's a lot of work for very small, you know, morsels of reward and gratification, you know. A lot of it's delayed. So it was this big battle between who I was supposed to be versus who I know I am in making that pivot. I'm a very self-aware person, and so I tend to consider as many possibilities, pros and cons as possible. And what was frustrating is that I didn't feel like they really gave me enough credit for everything that I already recognized because I'd done so much self-reflection and research and, you know, tried to consider everything from every angle, which was why I was so overwhelmed and why I was putting so much pressure on myself. To someone who's very secure in themselves and they really don't mind doing their own thing, for them, it's no problem. Like, they're gonna go for what they want and it's, you know, call it a day. But for me, I cannot do that. I have a lot of different images to uphold and doing something that I wanted to do for myself seemed so rebellious. And this was not that long ago. This was like a month ago two or three, two, three weeks ago, you know, when I was going through this. So it's very, very, very recent. For about a good two weeks, I was just like stress crying, gushing to my therapist about all this. Everyone in my inner circle is very supportive. The only thing is they don't always get it. The way that a photographer I works is how my brain works. It's like, oh, go, go pose by that wall over there and I'll take a picture. And then when the picture comes out, it's like this really cool looking image. You know, it's like the same thing. I get, I get these very intuitive feelings about opportunities that make no sense, you know, like the internship. And I decide to go for it anyway because I have such a strong gut feeling about it, and so, which is what I ended up doing. I ended up agreeing to take the internship, knowing that it would only last for six months, which in the grand scheme of things is a pretty short amount of time. It's more connections I could make, another diverse experience, it would make me more competitive candidate, I could put it on my resume, like whatever. And education uses a lot of writing and vice versa, you know? I decided to take the opportunity. And then right after that, um, I got a call from the other opportunity with the book launch business, and they offered me a position, this time part-time. So I was so lucky in that I was able to get both of the two big opportunities that I really wanted in the same industry. It is a handful, it's a plateful, but at the same time, it's for such a short amount of time, for six months, um, before I'm really gonna have to make another big decision on which avenue I wanna go now that I'm in publishing. Do I wanna go the editorial route or do I wanna go the book launching route that has to do more with marketing and communications? And both of these opportunities really reflect two big interests of mine. And I think a lot of that is just a result of acting authentically and intuitively, which is in the intro of I think every single one of my videos so far. Because as I was going through this, I was reflecting back on the intro that I always give in videos, which is, you know, I'm lost in the right direction, but I try to act authentically and intuitively. 
And if I went the education route, something I'm very qualified for, I know a lot about, that makes sense, it's, it's a secure, secure job, the benefits are always really good, but it didn't, it didn't feel right. I'm just so exhausted by it. It's just such an exhausting profession right now. It's just been a big sigh of relief, and I just got through my first week of work onboarding at both places at the same time remotely, which has been a handful, but also a really exciting challenge because now I have a different kind of exhaustion at the end of the day where I'm actually like satisfied exhausted which is really weird it's like a healthier version of being tired a healthier version of stress which is totally foreign to me i'm just i'm used to being stressed and freaking out and having anxiety about everything all the time i'm just a very sensitive person i feel everything always so um i just thought i would share this because i really think the story has a lot of merit and can provide a lot of value to others who are in a similar situation and they're making the decision between who they know they should be and who they know themselves to be and I think that's a really difficult battle especially to fight on your own if you're someone like me you're alone in a big city you've only got a handful of people in your you know inner circle maybe you have a therapist on standby that you talk to that's always nice to have and to tie this back in with the whole chicken coop thing I feel like I landed exactly where I was meant to be um, if you take the plunge, a nut will catch you. And I would say that the difference between pressure and intuition is that intuition never pressures you. Um, it only consistently suggests. <laughs> it's never gonna force you to do something. Oh, I should do this. It's more of like, hey, I wonder. Um, I'm curious about this. I wonder what would happen if you tried this. Anyway, I hope this video helped. I'll try to plug in some uh, helpful resources that guided me through this, these decisions I had to make in case anyone is interested. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I also have an Instagram page you can follow. I um, have a website that has a lot of my publications and stuff that I'm trying to build, and I am trying to get um, a newsletter out that has to do with kind of like short blurbs, books that I'm currently reading, good media that I've been absorbing. So if any of that is of interest to you, I'll be sure to link everything in the description box below. And I appreciate you watching and I hope you're taking care of yourself. Also stay warm, especially if you're in the Midwest, it gets cold. Okay, bye. <laughs>